Have you ever wondered how to build a dividend portfolio for passive income? An intriguing question, isn't it? Well, you're not alone. Many are curious about this exciting world of investment, yet they're unsure where to begin. Today, we're shining a light on this very topic, showing you the ins and outs of a dividend portfolio. So, what exactly is a dividend portfolio? Simply put, it's a collection of investments, specifically in dividend-paying stocks. These stocks pay out a portion of their earnings to shareholders. That's you on a regular basis. It's like getting a slice of the company's profits without having to clock in or out of work. Quite an appealing prospect, isn't it? This potential to generate passive income has made dividend portfolios a popular choice among investors, from beginners to the seasoned ones. And the best part? It's not as complicated as it may seem. In this video, we will break down the process of building a dividend portfolio into simple, easy-to-follow steps. First, it's essential to understand what dividends are. So, let's dive into the world of dividends, shall we? Picture this. You buy a piece of a company. In other words, you buy a share of its stock. Now, when that company makes a profit, it has a couple of options. It can reinvest those profits back into the business for expansion, research, debt reduction, or any number of things. Or it can choose to distribute a portion of those profits back to you, the shareholder, and voila, that's a dividend for you. Think of dividends as your share of the company's success. It's like the company saying, hey, thanks for believing in us, here's your cut. Dividends are usually paid out on a regular basis, often quarterly, but sometimes monthly, semi-annually, or annually. Now, you might be wondering, why are dividends so attractive, especially to income seekers? Well, dividends provide a steady stream of income, in addition to any growth your stock may achieve. They can be a safety net in volatile market conditions, providing consistent returns while the stock price may fluctuate. So, which companies typically shell out dividends? Well, these are usually established firms that have reached a certain level of maturity. They have steady profits and don't need to reinvest all of their earnings into the business for growth. These companies span across various sectors from utilities to consumer goods, healthcare and technology, to name a few. They can provide a steady income stream, making them a popular choice among income seekers. Sure, dividends are not the be-all and end-all of investing, they are just one part of the puzzle. But understanding them is a crucial step in your investment journey. They can be a reliable source of income and can help you achieve your financial goals. Now that we understand dividends, we can start building our portfolio. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the art of choosing the right stocks and diversifying your portfolio. But before that, if you're finding this content valuable, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps us to keep bringing you these insights. Now, let's move on to the next scene. The next step is selecting the right stocks. Now, this might sound simple, but it's actually quite a delicate process. It's like picking fruits from a market. You want to make sure that they are ripe, fresh, and will provide you with the nourishment you need. Similarly, when choosing stocks, you need to consider a few crucial factors. The first factor to consider is the company's financial health. This is the backbone of your investment. You want to invest in companies that are financially robust and have a proven track record of stability. Look for companies with low debt levels, strong cash flows and consistent earnings. These are indicators of a company's ability to withstand economic downturns and continue paying dividends. Next, we delve into the dividend yield. This is the annual dividend payment divided by the stock's current market price, expressed as a percentage. A higher dividend yield can be appealing as it means more income for you. But remember, a high yield may also signal a struggling company, so it's crucial to balance yield with the overall quality of the company. Then we have the dividend growth rate. This is an indicator of a company's ability to increase its dividend payments over time. A company with a steady dividend growth rate is likely to be financially healthy and committed to returning profits to shareholders. This means not only do you get a regular income, but this income can potentially increase over time. Lastly, don't forget to consider the industry in which the company operates. 
Some sectors are known for their generous dividend payments, like utilities and consumer staples. However, these industries may also be more sensitive to economic fluctuations, which could affect dividend payments. In essence, choosing the right stocks is about finding a balance between yield, growth and risk. It's about understanding the company, its industry and its potential for future growth. Remember, the goal is to choose stocks that will provide steady, reliable income over time. So take your time, do your research and build a portfolio that suits your income needs and risk tolerance. Before we dive into our next topic, we wanted to take a moment to engage with you, our viewers. It's you who fuel our channel and we want to ensure that we're providing you with the most valuable content possible. If you're finding this video helpful and want to support us in creating more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button. This helps us know that we're on the right track and that you appreciate our work. It also tells YouTube's algorithm that our content is valuable, which helps us reach even more people who are interested in investing. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll get notified every time we post a new video. This way, you won't miss out on any of our future content, including upcoming videos on investing, personal finance and more. And finally, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to drop them down below. We love hearing from you and strive to respond to as many comments as we can. We're all here to learn and grow together. So let's keep the conversation going. Remember, your engagement helps us create better content for you. So like, subscribe and share your thoughts. We appreciate it and we're sure other viewers do too. Now, let's move on to our next topic, diversification. Now, let's talk about diversification. You've heard the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Well, that's the gist of diversification. It's a strategy that involves spreading your investments across various sectors and companies. This way, you're not overly dependent on the success or failure of any single investment. Think of it like this. Imagine your portfolio as a ship sailing on the high seas of the market. If you only have one type of cargo and it happens to be something the market doesn't want, your ship is going down. But if you have a variety of goods aboard, the loss of one type of cargo won't sink your ship. It's the same with investing. Diversification helps to reduce risk. Let's say you invest solely in the tech sector and then there's a tech crash. There goes your investment. But if you've spread your investments across various sectors like tech, healthcare, consumer goods and more, a tech crash won't wipe out your entire portfolio. Now, diversification isn't a guarantee against loss, but it can help cushion the blow. It's a bit like a safety net. If you fall, you won't hit the ground as hard as you would without it. But how does one diversify? Well, that's the fun part. You get to explore different sectors and companies. You can choose to invest in large, established companies that have been around for decades. Or you can invest in smaller, up-and-coming companies. You can invest in companies based in your home country. Or you can go global and invest in companies around the world. The choice is yours. And the possibilities are endless. Remember, the goal here isn't to eliminate risk entirely. That's impossible. The goal is to manage risk. Diversification helps you do just that. It helps you build a more resilient portfolio, one that can weather the market's ups and downs. So as you build your dividend portfolio, consider diversifying. Invest in different sectors, in different companies. This way, you're not only reducing risk, but you're also opening yourself up to a world of potential opportunities. Diversification is key in building a strong and stable dividend portfolio. One strategy that can boost your income over time is reinvesting dividends. Now you might be wondering, what does reinvesting dividends even mean? Well, it's quite simple. When you receive dividends from the stocks you own, instead of pocketing that cash, you use it to buy more shares of the same stock. This strategy offers a dual benefit. First, it allows you to increase the number of shares you own without dipping into your wallet. Second, it sets you on the path of compounding, a powerful tool in the world of investing. Let's delve a bit deeper into the concept of compounding. It's often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world and for good reason. Compounding is the process where the earnings from an investment are reinvested and then those earnings earn even more. 
It's essentially interest on interest, or in this case, dividends on dividends. Imagine a snowball rolling down a hill. As it keeps rolling, it picks up more snow, growing bigger and bigger. That's the power of compounding. The longer you let your dividends reinvest, the more your portfolio grows, just like that snowball. But how significant can this growth be? Let's take a simple example. Say you have a stock that pays a 4% dividend annually. If you take the dividends as cash, your income from that stock remains static. But if you reinvest those dividends, your number of shares grows. And with more shares, you earn more dividends, which can then be reinvested to buy even more shares. Over time, this creates a cycle of growth that can significantly boost your income. And there's another advantage to this strategy. By reinvesting your dividends, you're essentially dollar cost averaging. You're buying more shares when prices are low and fewer when they're high, which can help smooth out the ups and downs of the market. Reinvesting dividends can significantly increase your passive income in the long run. It's a strategy that takes patience and discipline, but the rewards can be well worth it. So next time you receive a dividend, consider rolling that snowball down the hill. You might be surprised at how big it can become. Now you have the knowledge to start building your dividend portfolio. We've journeyed through the world of investing, starting with the basics of understanding dividends, those regular payments made by companies to their shareholders. We've navigated the complex landscape of choosing the right stocks, considering factors like dividend yield, payout ratios, and the company's financial health. We've emphasized the importance of diversification, spreading your investments across different sectors to mitigate risk. We've also dived into the concept of reinvesting dividends, a powerful strategy to accelerate the growth of your portfolio and compound your earnings. This knowledge is your tool set, your map in the vast terrain of investing. It's your first step towards financial independence. But remember, it's just the beginning. The world of investing is ever evolving and there's always more to learn. Remember, building a dividend portfolio is a journey, not a destination. Keep learning, keep investing and watch your passive income.